Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about this. The Saganite Kevin Hot or Cold Tumbler. It's great, it keeps everything warm or everything cold, whichever you want, it's all manual. <laughs> You don't have to make it do that. It just does it. Through the month of December, we gave away one of these to anybody who signed up to my Patreon for $10 or more. Well, guess what? We're going to extend that, all right? Anybody who signs up to Patreon during the month of January still will get this. So sign up now. It's not too late. It's a really good mug. Or you can just go to the website and purchase it, but then you have to pay $20, but still a pretty good deal. Let's get into football month. Sports! You know, it's a rare occasion that I get to return to the universe of a movie that I've reviewed in the past. And it never seems to be the ones that you expect. I have reviewed the God's Not Dead franchise. I think that's probably the biggest, most famous Christian movie sequels that I've reviewed. And when those movies come out, <laughs> that is like Say Goodnight Kevin Christmas. Still need to get back to the Left Behind movies, but... Not today, because it's the beginning of a new year, and that means it's football month here on Sega Night Kevin. And two years ago, there was a football movie called Catching Faith. Mm. Mm. And for some inexplicable reason, <laughs> this past year, a sequel to Catching Faith came out. By golly, what kind of Sega Night Kevin Christian film? Movie reviewer would I be if I didn't review this one? So obviously, if you want to check out my original review, well, please go check that out. It's in the link in the description or click the card. You know how it works. What a movie. What a football movie that movie really is. I'm sure you all remember this, but just in case you need a refresher. Previously on Catching Faith. The original film is kind of more about the mother of a high school football player, despite the fact that it has football on the cover and it kind of implies football in the title of the movie. It was about Alexa, and her life is falling apart in the most upper-class way imaginable. Her straight-A student daughter might not get the scholarship. Her football star son has been caught drinking. Her father passes away, and her mother comes to live with them, and her and her mother don't get along very well. But the worst thing that's happening in her life is of course she was gifted the wrong, really expensive necklace from her gospel gangster husband. Plus, one of the ladies in town is gossiping about her. In the end, she's able to cope with all of these problems by joining a women's coloring book club. I'm not lying here. If you're a little confused as to how all of that could fit together in a cohesive movie, trust me, well, they found a way. Come on, Grandma. I'm not sure how they're gonna be able to make a movie that captures the magic, the beauty, the majesty, the excitement, the sports that the previous one did, but we're gonna find out today. So grab two coloring books and get ready for my movie night review of Catching Faith 2. Yeah, this is just the opening credits, so don't get too excited. Seems to already be giving us more football than the last movie did. Four years later. <laughs> for from what? The credits? What gets me about this four years later thing, you'll see as we go, but it doesn't even line up with the timing of the events that happen in the movie. You've just created a continuity error in your movie. Just leave it arbitrary. A flyover shot to establish we're in a, a town. This is happening in a town. So let's cut to our hero, our old friend, Alexa. <laughs> it's good to see old friends again, and we don't waste any time learning about what's new in her life. They offered me the job at Water Steps Design. Yes, that's right. She's giving up the rough life of a stay-at-home mom. Presumably so they can afford to pay for that expensive dining room set. And as exciting and thrilling as it is to see Alexa again, it's rather bittersweet because we then see that her mom is in the uh, late stages of Alzheimer's or dementia. What is that woman doing in the house? Yeah, there's not really a joke to be made here. What are you talking about? Okay, I could say something about the acting or whatever, but but you know what? I'm I'm not gonna touch on it. It might be kind of nice to get some time away from your mom. Okay, okay, just one thing. I I could say they're treating the mom 
kind of mean, you know, like they're sitting here talking about getting away from her right in front of her, but I'm a sensitive person. And I understand this is probably actually pretty good representation of the way everyday life ends up becoming whenever you're a caretaker for somebody like this in your home. I I'm sure it gets pretty frustrating. My home's a lot nicer than this place. So, hey, if this movie is a solid reflection of life and is true to relatable conflict, then you know what? I think I, I that's that. great. I can be positive sometimes whenever I think something's positive. Let's see how the movie is as we go. Hey, honey. No, it's Raven. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, nope, nope, I I was wrong. Sorry, I was wrong. I was so wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, at this time, It'll we get fine. a FaceTime from both of the kids Can at the same me? time. And yeah, boy, do we get a, a lot of hijinks in this wacky scenario. Nice. Am I on speakerphone? Yeah, you can hear you. Am I on speakerphone? Yeah, I hear you. Boy, I thought I was the sick one. Here we learn about two of the many conflicts we'll see in this movie. I'm engaged. What? Wait, what? You're engaged, Raven's engaged. They terminated my contract. I'm never gonna play again. Oh, Bo, I'm so sorry. But Bo, just think four years ago, you were a senior in high school trying to get into college, and now you're playing pro. Clearly, anything can happen. Did you guys hear me? Hello? I'm being overwhelmed with bittersweet emotions. I mean, I'm excited to see Alexa, but I'm sad to see the situation that she's in. She's got a new job, but she's also having to care for her mother. Raven is getting married. Getting married. Yes, no, yes you are. Who are you marrying? But Bo has lost his football contract. There's a lot happening, and, and we're only a few minutes into this movie. I'm coming oh, no. home. Edging faith to Alexa's got more problems. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the suburbs. All right, so we cut to Alexa and the OGG in the bedroom, repeating all the things that we already learned in the last scene. Our little girl is getting married. And we haven't even met the guy. And Bo, I... It's always so exciting to get to hear characters talk about the things that we've already learned. Wow, fun. I can't believe that. What are we gonna do? I mean, what are the odds that this would happen at the same time? It's like a contrived scenario that would only happen in a cheesy Christian movie. I've been wanting to plan this wedding since Raven was born. Your mom's a full-time job. You just got your dream career. Maybe it's time for a full-time caregiver. I'm not gonna have a stranger take care of my mother. Let's get a wedding planner. I'm not gonna have a stranger plan my daughter's wedding. So <laughs> it's not even that she can't afford all of these things. It's just she doesn't want to. Cool. So relatable. I just don't think that you can do all of this and be in the moment. Oof, okay. Just some quick rules for the would-be wannabe filmmakers out there. Number one, don't tell what you can show. Number two, don't tell what you've already told or that you know that the audience has probably picked up on already. And something that really isn't a rule, but it's something that it's just an intuition that you have to build up. Don't give all the answers right away. Figure out how to work your audience and let information drip slowly, you know? Give them time to think and feel like they're coming up with their own thoughts, thinking about and running through their mind what they would do in a certain scenario, like with this particular scene. It could have easily been the mom just looking at this book and you would get from that, okay, she's reminiscing, remembering her daughter, how she was young, and now she's all grown up. And the husband could have come in and she could have said something like, I just don't know how I'm gonna fit it all in, or there's just not enough hours in the day. Or if you actually wanna come up with something clever that has two meanings. Time's always slipping through our fingers. Something that implies both that her daughter's not a little girl anymore because time moves so quickly, but also implies that there's not enough time in the day for her to do all the things she wants to do. The point is you could cut out almost everything that happens in this scene and still get all the information across. And some of the information you could let simmer for a little bit. This has been Storytelling 101 with Kevin. So later, while Alexa is having her patience tested with her mother, <laughs> Bo comes home. Yes, that's why it's called homecoming. There's nothing they can do. It's blown. So call me naive, but part of me thought that maybe this one would, I don't know, have a little bit of football in it but no remaining true to the franchise the connection to football in this football movie is that the kid who plays football once again can't play football <laughs> cool what am i gonna do now well anyway that's when raven comes home <gasps> homecoming alexa she doesn't know who raven's fiance is 
So who gave it to you? As we've already been told twice, it's and Raven, she doesn't seem that thing. interested in telling we her. We could get married in your backyard under the arch that you and dad did. Wouldn't that be so special? Yeah. <laughs> Which makes things a little awkward. Hey, what? No love for your brother? <laughs> Raven, who? And that's when Alexa realizes the man who gave her daughter this. the ring was her own son? Raven, seriously, who are you marrying? Please don't say your brother, uh, please. You didn't tell mom. You know? <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. Wait till you hear who it is. It's Nathan Adam. <laughs> Oh man, that was scary. My, my, my best friend from high school, mom, you don't remember? I genuinely thought we were gonna have a Star Wars type situation here, but fortunately, no. Wow. Why, you might be asking? Well, it's because the guy who she actually is marrying is the son of the lady who was gossiping about Alexa in the last movie. Remember? Remember? Aren't you as invested in these characters as I am? Well, later, I I'm not sure how long because it doesn't tell me at the bottom of the screen. I'm so confused. Alexa is at her new job. And I actually found this scene pretty funny. I've worked at this place basically in my life. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Here in Nashville, you apply for a job, especially in media or anything creative. It's gonna be in an old industrial building with some young hip guy who's like, hey, here's some headphones and bring your own computer and yeah. Does everyone sit together? We believe creativity is fostered by shared energy. That's why we donate 10% of our profits to provide clean water for the world. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about where I work now. Where I work now is fine. These places where it's like these chic, millennial, vibey, arrogant bourgeois places who have to virtue signal. Yeah, we're really doing good things for the community while we don't give our employees suitable working space. <laughs> oh look, we have a couch, yeah, and a concrete floor, an Ikea desk. Doesn't that make us seem like we work at Google, basically? What's wrong? Do, do we need to add a beanbag chair? Do you think you can have those emailed to everyone by lunch? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, this is too real for me. I'm already loving this movie simply because it takes a jab at these types of places, and I can appreciate that. So you know what? Two points for you, movie. I hope it doesn't go downhill from here. Well, now it's time for the staple, the foundation of the Catching Faith franchise. That's right, it's the return of the Coloring Book Club, our favorite part of the last movie. This is great. Just in case you might have missed it when they've told us everything that's happening three times, Alexa recaps the film for us. Cool, thanks. My daughter is getting married to my ex-best friend's son. I mean, no wonder they didn't tell me I already know him. Hey Alexa, recap the film for me. My son lost his career, my mother keeps running away, my daughter's getting married, and I literally just started my dream job. Wow, I can't believe they got I mean, all of our lot. favorite coloring book club members back. Well, not all of them at least. Mm. And boy do they give Alexa some great advice. Sometimes husbands can be so good at minimizing things, even when they don't mean to. Oh man, like husbands are the worst, aren't they? May I please grab my phone so I can Google who came up with the expression love in the moment? <laughs> no, no, phones stay in the basket. Well, they're all having a lot of fun before Wet Blanket speaks up. But didn't God come up with that live in the moment thing? Let's do it the old fashioned way. The Bible is better than Google, right? And God is the author of time. Yes, great contribution, Kathy. Well, Philippians 4.19 says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. If I had glorious riches, I'd have a maid. <laughs> You'd hire a stranger? It's God's glorious riches. Well, maybe he should share. Yeah. <laughs> he does. In fact, this week's study asked the question, what am I doing here? Whoa. Deep. So after a long Bible story, it's time, of course, for coloring. Yeah! But before they have too much fun, there's of course some ground rules they have to follow. Oh, wait, 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 there are directions. Well, it says to color in our tree. It's September, so obviously it's fall. Yeah, that must be why every tree around here is super green. It means the season of life. Cool. <laughs> but it's a time that allows us to slow down and reflect on what we've been through. Ugh, I hate this so much. I mean, I love it, it's great. I do know that leaves are falling off my tree and new buds are yet to be visible. Okay. Well, this is getting too weird. needs no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Funny tree. So ladies, why don't we take this week and just reflect on our trees and 
Think about the question, what am I doing here? Could I take a drill to my temple Emily, instead? thank you again for hosting. You are yes. so well. Wow, who the heck's house is this? But before Alexa leaves, Mrs. Nice has something to say. Want to know my secret to fitting it all in? What? I don't. <laughs> Please give yourself permission to take a day off. Can we think about it? I'll think about it. I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Wow, it's the perfect metaphor for this movie. There they are sitting around talking about how their burden is so heavy that they're just struggling so much. And then like the pregnant lady is carrying all of their books in the background. Alexa, pay attention. Meanwhile, Bo realizes it's time to hobble over to the old high school. The sign might have led you to believe he was going to the ladies Bible study, but no, it's where unfunny coach Billing Ball is still sitting on that bench. Wow. Yeah, I just, uh, I sit here in the hot sun, you know, you never know when an old student's gonna come by and ask for some advice. The coach wants Bo to come and be his new assistant coach. He always did have a good head for the game. Bo, he's a little hesitant. He feels like going from playing professional football to being the assistant coach to a high school team is a step down. Maybe he hasn't seen Reggie's prayer. Commitment! Commitment! It just seems like kind of a letdown after you've played college ball. Get drafted by the pros. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I used to do nationwide tours with Jeff Foxworthy, and now... All I seem to be able to do is get into mustard seed production movies where I sit on a bench and give fatherly advice. Coaching teenagers doesn't exactly sound like an adventure. Coaching teenagers doesn't exactly sound like an adventure. Because you see, Bo, at the end of your life, it's not your accomplishments that matter. It's the people you spend time with. That's right. Don't try to accomplish well, things. Just hang out with friends. Meanwhile, yeah, Alexa is trying to find party, the perfect dress, dress for her daughter's really short engagement yeah, party. That? Whatever that is. I'm sure it's a thing. I'm sure other people have had engagement parties, but uh, it sounds like the worst kind of thing ever. I want to be involved in planning these things. Ugh. <laughs> Here we go. More information about how people feel. Feelings. Feelings. Did I wear this at the last company outing? Um, I feel like that shirt might be a little too similar to what I'm wearing. I'm the mother of the bride. I'm the boss. That's How about right. that? You heard it here. Okay. I'm gonna go help your mom get ready so you can wrap up what this, whatever this is. Man, I, I think the husband's the one who needs to go to a coloring class. He's the one dealing with the most stuff. Later, it's time to go to the engagement party where things don't go exactly as planned. Alexa. Jazzy. The whole time, oh, so things are super tense between Alexa and her red. former friend and mother of the groom, Jezzy. All kinds of things happen. Basically, Jezzy is taking charge of all of the wedding planning, and, you know, it just makes Alexa so mad. What? I just love your daughter. It will be so much fun to work with her again to plan the wedding. This could be the perfect place to hold the reception. Yeah, that's the type of performance you could only get from a former Victoria's Secret model. Who is this? I'm Senator Anderson Cape. All right, things are getting too uncomfortable over there. Let's cut over to what we've all been waiting for. The groom and Bo having a nice heart to heart. I think this goes without saying, will you be my best man? I'd be honored. I think we both need shields of strength right now. Then we get something that I just don't think we've had enough of in this movie. Alexa complaining. She reminds me of Cinderella's evil stepmother. Who? Her. All right. Yeah. I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah, in a fantasy world. No. But in reality, she used to be your best friend. Once upon a time. That's that clever. That's good. That's clever. <laughs> well, now that was funny. I think maybe I gave this dad a hard time because of his shirt last time, but he's actually a pretty funny actor. I like him. Maybe I'm just in a good mood today. <sighs> This is when things go terribly wrong because the mom starts to eat the giant wedding size engagement cake. And everyone just stands around laughing at her. Hilarious. People who are sick and need help are funny. Well, later that day for night, Alexa, still in her dress from the engagement party, goes over to Jezzy's house to give her a piece of her mind. Did you move into my neighborhood? Yes, I had to rent this house so I could be close to Plan Raven's wedding. <laughs> no, you are not Plan Raven's Ah, uh, cool exposition. This is my daughter. I am doing this. I've been dreaming about this my whole life. This scene actually isn't that bad. There's a lot of information that they yell at each other that I think works here if we hadn't already learned all of the stuff that uh, we learn in this scene earlier in the movie. This is my chance. You are the mother of the groom, not the bride. See, this, I think, would have been the perfect time to release 
this information. Like, it would have been implied earlier, but now she could say it in a much more natural situation. You're welcome. I fixed your movie, basically. Do you understand me? You're not taking this away from me. Do you hear me? Yeah, I think the whole neighborhood just heard you. Good. Meanwhile, Bo is coming to the realization that he might actually have to coach high school football. Ugh, the worst thing you could possibly do. However, the students seem to love him. That's all you can really ask for. I can't believe it, it's Bo Taylor. You're shorter in person. Oh, good. They have a girl on the team. Should I make a joke about this, even though I'm basically really indifferent on the issue? You put your team on the map, man. Coach see how to watch all your games as a reference. I I've looked up to you since I was in middle school. And that was 35 years ago. All right, all right, won't y'all head back to practice? Meanwhile, Jezzy barges into Alexa's house to get measurements or something. Man, you would think she would have gotten a clue after Alexa came over to her house and yelled at her, a little slow on the uptake. I guess she's as slow as me when friends are trying to indicate, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Leave me alone. Don't ever talk to me again. What do you think about it for the bridesmaids? They're awful. I got you one too! And Alexa still hasn't changed out of her dress. I think what it's trying to imply is that she stayed up all night. I don't know, it's weird. Well, now she goes full Latina. Jesse, quita me de la cabeza. Ahora. <laughs> I wouldn't have even brought this up. It doesn't matter, but it's weird. Her dad didn't look all that. Hispanic? Maybe he is. Her mom certainly didn't. It just was never part of the story. The only reason I'm even talking about this is because I feel like this is played more as a joke because it's funny for the actress than it is for anybody else. Well, after all this excitement, I think it's time once again for another coloring book session. What is the present condition of your castle? Who lives in your castle? Is there any conflict? Who lives in the castle tower? Is anyone trapped up there? Is your drawbridge up or is it down? <laughs> so last time it was about trees, this time it's about castles. These are either metaphors for life or unintentional innuendos. I'm closing the drawbridge. I could do your castle with my eyes closed. <laughs> Am I that open of a book? My castle is cramped. I think I need to open my drawbridge. Well, my husband wants to move our castle to Florida. Mm. Oh. My castle is feeling empty and sad and lonely and way too quiet. See that? There's, that's a dragon. <laughs> Did you name it Jazzy? That's Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the drama. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, we get a whole new set of problems. Look out, ladies and gentlemen. Nathan's being deployed. <laughs> oh no! Why? That's sad. Huh? Well, Alexa decides that things have gone so this far. Is it's so it's much time for fun. her to go ahead and let a stranger take care of her mom back at a home. Welcome to hey, Seasons. Hey, it's not a stranger. You know it's this my friend Terry date. Minton. Bingo. Always good to see Terry. No jokes to be made here. But as you might expect, her mom doesn't do too well at the home. Honey, your mother ran away. What? That was the worst experience of my life. You're being a bitch. And we're back. All right, where did I leave it off? Oh, right. You're being a bit dramatic, don't you think? But I'm sure what you're really wondering what I'm really wondering is, what are they learning at the coloring book club, of course? I feel like I'm missing everything. Ugh, classic case of FOMO. FOMO? Mm-hmm. What is FOMO? The fear of missing out. Whoa, so relatable. Wow, you learn something new every day. <laughs> I feel like that all the time. Well, how can we not with this thing in our hands, right? Oh, that is so true. Kids these days and their technology and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's so true. <laughs> These meetings get worse and worse. Please, I hope this is the last one. All right, a coloring book class wouldn't be complete without Alexa complaining about her life again. Bo's injury, it's a big stone I haven't had time to deal with. And my dad's death is a glaring stone that I can't get over because my mom is constantly talking about him like he's still alive. And Raven, not telling me about Nathan, that stinks the most. 
Oh, 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 your daughter not telling you who she was going to marry earlier than the time when she did tell you who she was going to marry stings worse than your father's death? Alexa, I'm beginning to think maybe your priorities might be a little off. Besides, those aren't even things that happened to you. Like your son being injured? That happened to him. That didn't happen to you. And speaking of her son, Bo, apparently the team is starting to lose respect for him. And this makes him inexplicably angry. No disrespect, Bo Taylor, but I know my team better than you. And I know football a lot better than you. Look, I'm just trying to- Hey, who here has played professional football? All right, all right, let's settle down. Put your rulers away. Can you believe that he's questioning me? Oh. Leadership is more than just dictating. Okay, so then we get a lesson. Uh, let's skip that. If you want to learn that, you can check out the movie. I don't care about those kids' trust. You keep living in the past. You're never gonna have a future. Really? Did you read that on a fortune cookie? Oh, hey, look, there... I think I could see some football happening in the background. Don't, don't eat the party favors! Oh, oh so that's how they get those party favors together. I was wondering if we were gonna get to see that in this movie. And then it's mostly wedding planning and arguing for the next 20 minutes, so... We can skip that. Until this moment, when everything comes to a screeching halt. Where's Loretta? She turned invisible? Mom? Well, not exactly. That's when these two parallel situations happen. One of the players on Bo's team gets injured. Somewhere off screen. Meanwhile, somewhere else off screen, grandma is also being taken to the hospital. After she, I can only assume, was ran over by a reindeer. Man, I really hope that person we don't know is okay. Don't worry, he is. And it turns out the injury is great because now Bo and him are able to reconcile their differences that they apparently have. When I was in high school, I had to sit out a couple games. I wanted to quit. But Coach Z, he went with me. <laughs> Coach Z always does a great cheerb. Remember. The Titans. You're a part of this team. No matter how old you get, you're always a part of this team. But Grandma wasn't so lucky. Her skull was fractured and the internal hemorrhage in her brain caused her to stop breathing and we just couldn't save her. I mean, we could, but we just didn't feel like it. Sweet, sweet. Uh, then we get a two minute being sad montage. Hey, Alexa, look at the bright side. Now she's not going to be reminding you of the pain of your father's death anymore. Aw, oh, man, and just when I thought the being sad montage was over, no, we've got another minute and a half. Fortunately, I'm not the only one who's had enough of it, because that's when the dad slash husband, finally, somebody within the movie says something that I've been wishing somebody would say throughout this whole movie. This isn't just happening to you. Okay, I've taken care of your mom for a long time, too. My daughter is getting married, too. I work a full-time job, and I have been nothing but supportive of you. I feel like my whole life is just supporting you. Dude, yes, yes, see, thank you. But uh, that's when Jezzy comes over. I feel partly responsible. <laughs> What's so funny? It's incredible how you can make my mother's death all about you. How can you make my mother's death about you when clearly it's about me? <laughs> It's so funny. It's so crazy. I think I think the wackiest thing about this movie is that it seems completely unaware of the underlining flaws in this character. I should have been paying attention. But then we learn. You think it's going to be good news? No, it's devastating news. We decided to take the pressure off of everyone and elope. What? Absolutely not. No, you are not eloping. We're united on this. But then we learn that she doesn't really want to elope. You know me, I don't want to elope. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, she has a much, much better plan. Something that will make things completely uncomplicated and not stressful or confusing at all. She decides... I want to have the wedding and the funeral together. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> what? How is that better? I would not go to that wedding. I'm so happy! And, and my condolences, I, ha, I'm glad you're married, I'm... I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy or sad here. I love you. What's love you. happening back here? 
What are you doing, movie? Wow. Hilarious. In one of the most serious moments in the movie, you've got this going on back there. Do you think that's funny? You think that's real funny, movie? This is the thing. If you're not going to take yourself seriously, movie, why should I? All right, so before the joint wedding funeral takes place, first we have to have the heart-to-heart really -heart conversation between Jesse and Alexa, where they finally make up. So sweet. I am so sorry for everything. Football, everybody. Football. All right, well, glad they worked everything out. Very good, very happy for them. Now it's time for the long-awaited wedding funeral. We're gathered here today in front of each other and in front of God. And seriously, they, they stop in the middle of the vows. Let's spend a moment and honor the life of Loretta Gomez. And dump out the ashes. Who has the urn? I have it! I have it! Oh, goodness! I have it! <laughs> <laughs> Dead grandma! This isn't funny. This isn't interesting. This is, what are you doing? What is this? All right, they're finally married. Can we be done yet? Oh wait, we gotta get a little joke here at the end. You really don't have to wait that long. What? <laughs> we bought the house next door. <laughs> 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 Uh, there you have it, everybody. Everything is gonna be okay. Everybody's gonna get along. Uh, that is until, of course, Catching Faith 3. European vacation or something. Who knows? From what I understand from movies like this, the idea is you present a bunch of stuff going wrong in someone's life, then you provide a solution for those things that are going wrong. So I guess, in a way, this could be considered its own genre. That's an attribute of the genre. But even so, there's two things that continue to be so strange to me about these movies. One, the situations that they find themselves in seem so out of touch with the average person's life. And two, I, I just don't find these movies very entertaining. Obviously, they're not for me, but still. I think lessons that are in movies, which there's a lot in a lot of movies, are most effective and impactful when they create a character and a situation that's interesting and entertaining first and foremost. In this movie, it might be slightly more relatable than the last movie, but the solutions seem pretty weak, right? Is this stuff based on research or is it in a, an established curriculum? What is really motivating the answers that they present in this movie? Is coloring a tree or a castle really the best way to solve your problems? I mean, I don't know, maybe. Kind of reminds me of the Netflix series, 13 Reasons Why, where like they wrote the book and they did the movie, and then it turned out they had not consulted any actual psychologists about this extremely sensitive topic. So even if these solutions are relatable to some people, I feel like the solutions are the most flowery, shallow, echo chamber solutions where they're just like nodding at each other saying, yeah, that's good, that sounds good. And yes, I make jokes about this not being a football movie because it's not, and I know that it's not, and I didn't honestly expect for it to be, I gave up on that a long time ago. But even as the type of movie that this is trying to be, not a football movie, it kind of fails at that, right? It's like a motivational bumper sticker turned into a movie. Hey, upper class white women, don't worry. It's gonna be okay. You can get through the struggles that you're going through. Good to know, I'm glad. Who knows, it could be that this movie hits home, touches somebody's life right where they are, but Honestly, I'm tired of hearing that. You could literally say that about any movie. In the end, this is essentially the same as the first movie. There were a few more relatable moments, but it wasn't enough to balance it out. It's weird that of all the movies in the world, this one is the one that gets a sequel. You must have tricked a lot of dads into watching this on Pure Flix with your football cover. That's all I've got to say for today. I'm Kevin, the accountability partner nobody asked for. <laughs> Good night. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this review. I just want to give a big shout out to people on Patreon. We just had an awesome live stream. Got to talk to several of you newcomers who got the cup. If you want one of these, just pledge $10 or more on Patreon and you'll get this. Also, at the beginning of the month, I do those live streams. It's a lot of fun. Some of those people who do pledge happen to be the Voicey Here YouTube channel, Jacob and Emily Rugrock, Amanda Stewart, Isa Kabir, 
and Culture Shock on Webtoon. Those people are awesome. It's cool. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you all later. Good night. The Bible is better than Google, right? And God is the author of time.